Hello there, Drew Hannish of Whiskey Lore, and time for another whiskey tasting. Today, I am doing a Whiskey Wednesday with a whiskey that you will probably have a hard time finding, but not as hard as trying to find the Twice Barreled, which I never ever found, unfortunately. Once I went to the stores, they were like, sorry, we've sold out of it, except I did find one store that had it, and they were trying to sell it for $300 a bottle, and I was like, forget it. <laughs> I don't like supporting stores that gouge people on whiskey prices. It's probably the only thing that would send me to North Carolina, South Carolina, is that they can't gouge prices up there because everything is done through the ABC store and the government sets the prices. But this is a brand new product. It is only available through travel retail. But it is built on that idea of... Jack Daniels doing an American single malt. Now, I still haven't had a chance to taste the Jim Beam American single malt, Clearmont. I forget what the name of it is. I have not had a chance to taste that, and I need to at some point, just to get a baseline on what's going on with the larger distilleries running malt through column stills and trying to create something unique. Now, in listening, I just got off the call not too long ago with Chris Fletcher, master distiller at Jack Daniels. He said when they started doing this, they really did not have the intention of trying to recreate scotch. And, I mean, you have to ask the question, is it even worth it to try to do that? Scotch is scotch. It has its own, you know, different profiles, and it, it has such a range that in reality to say that you're copying a single malt is difficult. Set. We're also talking about different pot still shapes that they're using to make single malts in Scotland. And here it's going through a column still. So if you watch my video that I did long ago about my you know, reaction video of tasting the twice barreled, I was very skeptical going in because I had tasted a deconstruction of this particular whiskey without the time in the sherry barrel that this one has had. And it was not overly exciting. But then I did that tasting of the twice barrel and I'm like, these guys have nailed it. I mean, it is something that I think could stand up against a scotch very easily. And a lot of it has to do with that barrel that they have put it in, the sherry butt that they have put it in. They're getting quality barrels, and that is making a big difference. Now, this particular whiskey, as I say, is only going to be in travel retail. We're looking at a price of $100, basically, for a liter of whiskey. And so this is aged in Oloroso sherry, five years in American bourbon barrel, and then it goes an extra three years in an Oloroso barrel. Now, I asked Chris what the difference was between this and what they did for the Twice Barrel because when I first opened this bottle, maybe I was coming out of drinking other sherried scotches and then tasted this, and I thought, this has a lot of barrel influence on it. So it kind of caught me off guard at first. But today, when I went back in, air's gotten into the bottle, all of a sudden today, I was getting lots of those nice, rich Oloroso sherry notes. And so, this is one of those that you need to open it, you, you need to let it breathe a bit to get going. But like I say, it just took a day or so, and now this whiskey has kind of evolved. Still, that oak note is up front. But, um, but this idea of let's take this whiskey and put it in a barrel that's going to impart the personality of the barrel into the whiskey and work alongside what's going on with the malt distillate. Now they started distilling this stuff back in 2012 and then as time goes on they get to around 2018 and now Chris is going overseas to Scotland and trying different whiskeys over there and trying to see what direction they want to go. Because initially, he said, they considered going to PX 
and he liked the flavors of PX, but then leaned towards the Oloroso Sherry. And my feeling on this is that if you did PX with this, PX is a lot more bright, like raspberry notes, and you're going to get these really bright flavors and sweet flavors that maybe that hits the American palate properly, but in reality, it's almost overkill because you already are coming with a distillate that probably is going to have some sweetness to it. You're going to throw this on top of it and it's just going to become sickly sweet. Uh, let's say the Jim Beam experiment with their dark rye and the fact that that's almost like syrup drinking the Basil Hayden dark rye. You got to be careful about going that far with it and then it becomes a dessert topping <laughs> instead of a whiskey. So in this particular case, he thought to go with the Oloroso and that was a beautiful direction to go with it because it created a balance. It took a heavier, raisiny, dark fruit note and put it along with this spirit that may be potentially a little bit more on the sweet side. So, um, and when I say sweet, sweet side, it's not the malted barley that is bringing the sweet. It's the fact that they're aging it for five years in a um, traditional American barrel that is going to be giving those char notes and is going to be giving off a lot of the vanilla and caramel that we know so well with Tennessee whiskeys. That is what you're going to get in there. And so if you add PX to that, take me to a candy shop because that's basically probably what you're going to end up with. And actually, it was interesting to hear Chris say that it actually was taking some time to get results out of it. So maybe a little bit more delicate character to a PX versus a muscly Oloroso. And that Oloroso, bringing those raisins, the plum, you know, all of these dark fruit notes, they really do stand out on this particular whiskey. I'm talking about it a lot and it's yelling at me right now going, drink me. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. This is the question though. Um, we have a friend of the channel, uh, Gert, who is over in Belgium and he does a lot of traveling around. It would be interesting to see if he stops at travel retail and picks up a bottle of this how he feels this matches up or how this fits in with a lot of the Scotch whiskeys that he buys across the globe, because that's really the challenge here in putting it in travel retail. Another question that I asked was, are we, are, is the reason it went to travel retail because of lack of supply? In other words, they didn't necessarily know how much whiskey how successful this whiskey was going to be. So maybe they didn't lay down a lot of barrels. And then the other part is how accepting will people be of seeing a Jack Daniels label and thinking of it in the same vein as some of those really nice Irish whiskeys, Scotch whiskeys, now French whiskeys, and will it fit into that world? Japanese whiskeys, so on and so forth. And so, um, his, he wasn't really, uh, he said it was kind of a balance of the two. You know, it is kind of a test market thing. Uh, travel retail likes something unique. So they're getting something very unique with this particular whiskey. And then also they don't have a ton of stocks of it. They would like to see how this is going to go. And sherry barrels are very hard to get these days. Um, there may be a point where sherried whiskeys become a lot harder to find because there's such a limited supply of them. So I'm going to be doing a conversation here not too long from now with uh, Dr. Don Livermore from Hiram Walker. Interesting, I'm going to ask him about the use of, they have what's called a 909 rule, which means they can make 100% of whiskey, they can add 10% of something else to it. And there are certain rules around that, but they could add a wine or a sherry into that particular whiskey. And to me, I'm almost like, why don't you start putting 
sherry in something that you're making so that there's more demand for these barrels so they're not just basically putting sherry into the barrels, dumping the sherry, and then sending the barrels off to be used by everybody that's doing all of the finishing. Uh, and that would get us more sherry barrels. The other part is you guys need to buy more sherry. Because <laughs> if you like sherried whiskeys and we're not drinking enough sherry, those sherry barrels are going to become much harder to find. So another thing to keep in mind. All right, I have delayed long enough. It is time to jump in and nose and taste this particular Jack Daniels single malt whiskey, 90 proof. Very, again, I get the oak on the nose on this. And there's a little bit of a leathery component to this as well. And a bit of a chocolate note comes through as well. Mm. Cheers. Where this really hits, you hold it in your mouth and you're like, okay, I'm getting some nice flavors here. It's not until you let loose and it starts to slide back in. It's the middle of your mouth and towards the back that it's like the sherry bliss kicks in and you get some really nice flavors in there. What I like about this is that you get the, the raisin notes you get the plum notes, but there is this maraschino cherry that pops in and it, it brightens it. it. It makes a really nice sweetness to this. The issue that I have with Oloroso sometimes is that it gets too dark. And so I don't know what is bringing out this little cherry note. Maybe it's the particular style of barrel that they're bringing in, where they're bringing it in from, out of Herde, Spain. But there is this cherry note and it actually lifts and takes this from being too dark of an experience. And because, so, I mean, Bunahaven, I've had a Bunahaven where it was very raspberry and very dark. And it was so dark that I actually didn't end up liking it that much. It was almost dry and dark and foreboding, I guess would be a good term for that. And this is getting that brighter element that is something that you find when you go to like a Glendronic, which the 12 and the 15 are aged in both Oloroso and PX. And that offset of that PX brightens it up to take you from being on too dark of a journey. And so for me, again, I don't know where that's coming from, but... That three years in this Oloroso sherry barrel is imparting a lot of flavor, and yet something is keeping it from being overly dark, and maybe it is that sweetness that is coming from the five years in the new charred oak barrels, and I'm supposing, and I did not ask, but I am supposing they're toasting these barrels as well, because that's a general technique for Jack Daniels since they have their own cooperage, but... Um, it's really interesting. There's some nice spice in here as well. Um, but like I say, it's just a nice balance of the, the sweet notes just popping out enough to keep it from becoming a really dark experience. I like it. I, you know, I'm about to fly off to Scotland. Wouldn't it be so funny for me to come back with a Jack Daniels from Duty Free? Uh, it's, it may happen because uh, I couldn't get the other bottle and that so frustrated me. And so now this is probably the way to go. The question is, will this ever get to regular retail? Well, bottled in bond sat for a long time in travel retail and eventually made its way, but they're going to have to make enough stocks of this to be able to do it. I also asked, because this is, this is me. I'm talking to the distiller. I'm talking to the guy who's got some control over this. I said, I would love to see a distiller series at some point where you take this 
And then you go to Dr. Rachel Berry and you say, you got some of those Ben Rayek barrels that have uh, some of that nice heathery foresty peat in them and maybe do a finishing for a distiller series where you take the sherry and then you put it into there and you get a nice little bit of peat along with it because to me that little smoky character mm, could do really nicely with this. I hope you enjoyed this. Very informative, hopefully for you. Uh, it was informative being on the call for me and hopefully I got all the information out that I picked up in that particular call. And um, I really appreciate you guys watching. And make sure that you give me a uh, thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Leave your comments below. We'd love to hear them. And until next time, cheers and salon javon.